Man, you guys look good, you sound good, and some of you even, hallelujah, smell good. Yeah. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, how many of you know you're at the right place at the right time? Man, thank y'all, yeah. You're at the right place at the right time. So if you believe you're at the right place at the right time, that means this, you're going to leave with something. This week I was praying to the Lord, and I didn't hear his voice, but I felt his spirit upon me. He said, you know, if you go to the grocery store hungry... You always leave with more than what you went in for. And God is, that's how God speaks to B-Ref. And he's like, same way with church. If you come in hungry, you're always going to leave more with more than what you come in for. Somebody, somebody give God praise. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all need to eat a bag of Holy Ghost chips. Um, so here's the deal. Here's what I'm going to do. I want you to go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to get up out of that grave. Yeah, y'all sound good. Tell somebody else, it's time to get up out of that grave. I'm going to say it with authority. It's time to get up out of that grave. Look at me. It's time to get up out of that grave. Somebody give God praise. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Woo! I feel the Holy Spirit. I do not apologize for what God is getting ready to do in this house. We will see people that uh, you probably thought were saved that, that they're going to repent and they're going to come back. To Jesus Christ. There are people that are so far away from God right now. You've not been in church for a while. We've got a Facebook family. We're reaching thousands. But watch this. They can't feel what we feel in here. I'm dead. There's something special in this house. So listen to me. You're going you're, you're to be shocked. by what you're going to hear today. And I know how I went up against hell this week. Because of what I'm getting ready to preach to you. But I love you enough to preach truth over your life. And I do not apologize for what I'm getting ready to preach in this house. I wrestled with it. I fought with it. Matter of fact, I had people tell me, you better not preach it. Well, they're sissies. And here's the bottom line, man. It's time for me and you to realize there is a heaven and there is a hell. And you will go to one place or the other. You won't be in between. You won't be lollygagging around. You will either go to heaven or you will either go to hell. I can't get no more plainer. So. So, it's time to get up out of that grave. So, I want to go part two on the subject, get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. So, if you have your Bible, I want you to go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read the same verses I read last week because they're that powerful. They're that powerful. Mark chapter 5, verse 2 through 9, and I'm going to skip down to verse 15. Y'all got me? Somebody say, I got you, be ref. All right, here we go. Here we go. Mark chapter 5, verse 2 through 9. Help me, Holy Ghost, preach this word. Let me know when to pierce. Let me know when to withdraw. Let me know when to sit. Let me know when to stand. Let me know when to minister to the left and let me know when to minister to the right. Father God, give me your eyes. Give me your heart. Give me your spirit. Lord, let me be intentional about this sermon. God, this is no joke and I'm under your authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. And when he had come out of the boat, I, feel, I don't even know if I'm going to get through <laughs> I feel it, boys. When he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. Brian, I don't believe this. Well, you lost. Come out of the tombs. He lived in a graveyard. And no one could even bind him. Not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him. He had a devil in him. And the shackles broke into pieces. We're going to talk about pieces at the end of this. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, 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 night and day, day and night. He was in the mountains, in the tombs, in the graveyard, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he had, enough, he had enough knowledge that he seen something that he used to see. He seen the Lord from afar. And watch what happened. This devil, this demon, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I do to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Watch this. For he had said unto him, come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? 
Every demon has a name. Every demon has an assignment. Every demon. Don't y'all think you're just going to come to church to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church and you're just going to get by with it. Every evangelical Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church, when she opens her doors, the devil will walk in every time. What's your name? And he answered, my name is Legion. Legion in numerology means 6,000. This dude had 6,000 demons. Y'all look at me, please. Just don't read the Bible and say, oh, that's, that's a great story, Brian. He had 6,000 devils. 6,000 demons in him. And I told y'all last week, I'll get to the sermon in just a minute. Not even 6,000 demons can stop him running from Jesus. Not even 6,000 devils could stop this joker from getting to Jesus. So I'm going to ask you, what's y'all's excuse? What's your excuse? 6,000 demons, Jenna, couldn't stop him from getting to Jesus. Watch this, he said, my name is Legion. And he said, and Jesus saw, watch this, he said, for we are many, 6,000, matter of fact. Then they came to Jesus, watch, they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed. Demon possessed and had the, the legion sitting, watch this, enclosed in his right mind, and they were afraid. There's a lot of church people afraid. So last Sunday I told you this man was living in a graveyard. Everybody say he was living in a graveyard. Everybody else say he was living in a graveyard. Watch this, he was screaming, he was shouting, watch this, he was crying, he was, he was taking <clears throat> stones and cutting himself. He was doing that. And he was begging for help. Night. And day, day and night. You know what got in my heart was, this was somebody's husband. This was somebody's son. This was somebody's father. This was somebody that what we don't realize, this man, this demon-possessed man, went to church. He was raised in the temple. He was raised under the songs of David. Under the Psalms of, of the Bible. Now, how in the world did this man go from church, the church house, raising his hands, being in the presence of God, singing the songs of David, seeing the healings, the signs, and the wonders, and go from the church house to the graveyard? Some of you have been asking about your children. Some of you have been asking about, well, well where's this person at? Well, where's this person going? What's wrong with the generation today? I've got an answer for you, sir. How in the world did this happen? So here's, how I'm, here's what I'm going to tell you. all Listen to me. And I need you to lean in. I need you to listen before I give you all these three points. Demons, devils, Satan. Listen to me. <laughs> demonic depression. Demonic oppression. Yeah, and demonic possession. Is real. Y'all better not make fun of somebody who's mess who, who are demons on them. Because this demonic stuff that we're living in is real, and the churches are now they're scared to death. You talk about a devil or a demon, Lord, they'll go hide under a rock. Well, Brian, we we just don't do that at this church. Well, this church does. Because I realize I'm in a spiritual battle. I whether you realize it's not, you're in a spiritual battle. Devils, demons, demon possession, demon depression, demon oppression. It is real. Everybody say it's real. And I'm going to mess Southern Baptist up. Listen, Satan is as real as God. Some of you are so mad at the flesh and people who bleed, the spirit has already taken over you. you. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That person sitting beside you, watch this, where they realize not, they need you and you need them. And we need each other and we need God. So here, here it is. Listen, it's real. And the church better wake up, Brian. Why is all the government acting like they're doing? I'll tell y'all. <laughs> Some of them got a devil in them. And listen, don't be shocked. Devils have better church attendance than a lot of people do. This is true. And listen, don't be shocked. The, de the devil will walk in all the time. You can wear a suit, carry a KJV. You can go to vacation Bible school. You can teach Awanas, GAs, RAs, all the A's. What I'm telling you is this. The church has become so naive. 
When someone preaches about the devil, we know it's real. But we're absolutely scared to death. And we've got all authority. The devil's under our feet. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. You got to open your mouth and you got to call that joker out. Your children are not your enemy. I feel the Holy Ghost want me to lean this way. Your, your children are not your enemy. The devil that's influencing them is your enemy. The pastor and the deacons and the people of this church are not your enemies. Now, we may, listen, I have it all the time. The devil comes to me night and day, night and day, night and day, night and day, night and day. I battle depression. People look at me and say, Brian, you're strong. Well, what is? I'm telling y'all, it is real. It's real. It's real. And time is running out. And the devil, of all people, believes in the Bible more than a lot of us do. He knows that tongues is real. He knows that prophecy is real. He knows that he's real. And so I'm just asking y'all today, listen, time, how many of y'all time's running out? Right, raise your hand. If, I want y'all to participate with me. If you truly believe that Gabriel's lips are on the trumpet and time is running out, I want you to raise your hand. You, you better do something then. Going back. We better do something then. This patty cake church. This little kumbaya church. If we're living in the last days, there's going to be an outpouring. And I'm living in it. And I'm going to experience it. Amen. We got to walk by the Spirit. We got to live by the Spirit. We got to talk in the Spirit. We got to do what the God, God, you know why? Because you are a spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5. You are a spirit. So Satan's job, listen to me. Satan's job, his assignment is to test you, watch, to tempt you, to torment you, to control you, eventually drive you to a graveyard, and then to eventually destroy you. So I'm going to ask you, you may be being tested and tempted and tormented, but does he control you? And little by little, day by day, y'all watch, Satan is destroying people. I believe what Beth Cochran said, I truly believe that COVID was not, was not sent by Jesus Christ. I believe that was a plot and a plant by the enemy to stop the church, to divide the church. Watch this. History, if you read history, go back, it, does, it repeats itself. He's always been after the church. And watch this. COVID is not our last battle. He's going to come again. He will disguise himself as an angel of light. He'll disguise himself as someone else. He'll do that. But he cannot destroy what God has put together. The church God put together. I'm so sick. I wrote this in my note. I am so sick and tired of Satan destroying marriages. I'm going to talk about it today. I'm so sick and tired of him overtaking our teenagers with drugs and alcohol and all these nasty things. I am sick and tired of the enemy. And I serve him notice today. He done crossed over the line. He's trespassing today. And I'm coming and taking authority back over the church. You can sit there all you want to. I'm telling y'all, you're in a battle today. You better learn how to fight. Hallelujah. You better learn how to fight. Y'all not my enemies. We got to learn how to fight. The devil hates you. Teenagers, he hates you. Elkhorn, he hates us. He just wants us. He don't mind us being a little church off South Highway. Now, we started <laughs> flowing into gifts. We start seeing healing and signs and wonders and prophecy and all these things start happening. It's going to be hell. And you know who the worst people are? It's the religious people. Watch. So I truly believe the Lord spoke into me. You write this down. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe a word I'm saying. I'm going to back it up by the Bible. And then you've got a choice. Friday at 1010. I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. It's worth saying. God said, I did not say this. The Lord said, he's going to put it on the big screen. He said, you tell my children. He didn't call you Richie. He didn't call you Brian. He didn't call you Jennifer. He didn't call you Dylan. He didn't call you Bobby Walker. He said, you tell my children. Thus saith the Lord. And I wrote that down. Thus saith the Lord. There are certain things my children are indulging in. That's making me lose control of their lives. I'm going to read it again. Leave it up there. 
There are certain things. There are certain things my children are indulging in. That's making me lose control of their lives. That's powerful. That's powerful. Let me, let me talk about, if y'all are ready. How many of y'all are ready? Listen, bu buckle yourself in. <laughs> Spiritually buckle yourself in. Because I'm going to give you three quick things that will drive you to a graveyard. Drive you to a graveyard. Watch. They'll, they'll make you live in a tomb. I'm telling you. They'll make you lose your mind. They'll make you do things you said you would never, ever, ever do. These three things, they're not going to be a rocket scientist answer. It's so simple, the devil complicates it. Number one, help, all right. Holy Spirit, help me. Number one is drugs. I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Listen, I, I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as I can right now. But also, listen to me, I want to say this as plain, as plain, as plain, and as plain as I can while I'm under his influence. You cannot play around with drugs. You cannot play around with drugs. Watch this. Listen to me. Satan can and he will. I don't care if you save. Watch. He can and he will. He will overtake you with another influence. He will. He'll take control of your life. I know good people. I'm talking good people. Good people. That are under another, another influence. Listen. If you start playing around with drugs. Drugs will drive you to a graveyard. Y'all say amen. Amen. Listen to me, and there's some things here, I've got to tell this, I wrote this in my own notes. Your daddy's faith will not keep you from drugs. Your mama's faith will not keep you from drugs. If your granny was filled with the Holy Ghost, that will not keep you from drugs. But there's got to be something inside of you that says, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a royal generation, I'm not for sale, I, I love God, I'm not going to do it no more, I can't do it no more, I don't want to do it no more, help me Jesus. You got to want this. Y'all know why I quit drinking alcohol? Are y'all okay? Because y'all look at me like, I, I wanted to quit. And not for you. I'm telling y'all, there's all kinds of influences out there. And if we're not careful, you'll get comfortable under the wrong influence. I quit because I come under conviction. I had a man come to my office one time. And he said, Brian, he said, I smoke dope. And I looked at him and I said, I can tell. <laughs> Joe, we have quick counseling meetings, though. It's pretty quick, actually. And he looked at me and he said, he, were, he said, uh, I just don't know what to do. I said, do you want to quit? He said, no, not really. I said, you'll smoke another one. <laughs> There's got to be something in you that says, I'm not doing that. No more. I'm not doing it because the church says it's bad. I'm not doing it because the pastor said it's bad. I, I'm doing it because God said it's bad. I, I, I don't want to do that no more in my life. I'm coming out of the tomb. I'm coming out of the graveyard. I'm not going to do that stuff no more. Drugs will kill you, and it's more than a commercial. There's got to be something in you. I don't care. Watch. I, I know, man, I, I'm getting some resistance right now. It's okay. I don't care what other people do. I can't. Now, if they're going to do it, they got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Because when, you, when I stand before God, y'all lean in. When I stand before God, as much as I love you, and I know you love me, and I know you would fight for me. Some of you would. I'm telling y'all, you would not be standing beside me at the day of judgment. You will stand before God. Watch. And give an account on everything that you've done in your life. Can I, can I preach any plainer? I don't care what anybody else is doing. Listen, you're playing, watch, with the power of the devil when you mess around with drugs. I know some of you are saying, <laughs> I wrote this in my notes too. I, 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 wrote this, I know some of you are saying, well, Brother Brian, you're just an old-timey preacher. 
Brother Brian, watch here. I'll get this, I'll, I'll get this from Christians. Well, Brian, you just got to realize the day and time we're living in. Brian, everybody's doing it. Watch it. Evidently, me and you serve two different gods. Because my God says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. My God says you have not because you ask not. Huh. Listen, you do not have to take pills, drugs, alcohol, uppers, and downers to alter your mood. Listen, I know I'm, I'm preaching. <laughs> you know I know I'm preaching? Y'all quiet. Preacher is reading my mail. No, it's called Holy Spirit. I didn't want to preach this. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I did not. Matter of fact, he tried to get me late last night, getting sick, throwing up. This morning, he tried it again. He tried a while ago. I don't know if you noticed or not. He tried to get my voice. I'm fighting. There's got to come a time in your life that this thing that we call Jesus and that we call church and we call worship and we call prayer it's not just a, a thing sitting on a bookshelf. It's something that's a reality in me. It's who I am. I've been bought by the Lamb of God. I am a child of the one true King. I can't be bought. I, God's got me. I believe what I preach. And here's what God... Whew, mm. No pill, no drug. We say this all the time. No alcohol, no uppers, no downers can do for you what God can do for you. Put this up here. If you get addicted, I've said this before, but it's so I got to get this in your spirit. If you get addicted to the presence of God, you can't stay addicted to anything else. Somebody give him a bit. You, you get, you, hey, you love God the way you've been chasing that alcohol. You put God first more than that joint in your hand. You put, hey, you love God. You get addicted to God and you'll never go back. You'll never go back. Hey, you'll never go back. Get addicted. Somebody say, get addicted. Now everybody else say, get addicted. We've been addicted to everything. We've been addicted to everything. And I call it out today. Something's happening in me, y'all. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hi, I'm Brian Rafferty, and I'm an addict. I'm addicted to Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of my life. I drank him in the morning, and I drank him in the evening. Hey, I love him, and he loves me back. I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. And I got something to share today. If he done it for me, he'll do it for you. Somebody give him praise. Yep. That's right. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Because this next one, number two, number two, sexual perversion. Sexual perversion. Whew, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Sexual perversion. This is the one I did not want to deal with. <clears throat> Church, it is not okay to sleep around with whoever you want to. You cannot sleep with whoever you want to and hold on to Jesus and everything be all right. Sexual perversion. So, I wrestle with this because I know people think I judge them when I preach. It's not me judging you. I love you. I do not want you to have those spirit of sexual perversion. Look at me, men. It is not okay for you to commit adultery on your wife. Women, it is not. I feel, listen to me, you can get mad at me all you want to, but you can't prove it wrong in the Bible. Women, it is not okay for you to cheat around and walk. I, you can't do it. It's wrong. It's sexual perversion. And I call it sin today. 
so. What's wrong? Watch what the Bible said. Listen, <laughs> let's wrap this up. Because you can get mad at me all you want to. Thus saith the Lord. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, how many of y'all glad you come to church today? I, I know it's tight in here. I know it's tight in here right now. I know it's tight in here right now. I can't wait to say amen. Maybe that old spirit will get off me or something. My stomach's churning right now. My liver's quivering. Quivering liver. Whatever. <laughs> Galatians 5, 19 verse tw through 21. This is what God says. I'm saved. This is what God said. Well, Brian, you done hurt my... This is what God says. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, perversion, impurities, debauchery, adultery, and witchcraft, hatred. You can, if you are a child of God, you cannot say, I hate you. Love and hate cannot go together. You cannot, it cannot flow out of the same river. Discord. If you're a church troublemaker... If you always got something going on. Y'all yeah. better pray for me. If there's always a, if there's always a fire in your life. My granny said, if, if you go to work and there's a problem and you come to church and there's a problem. And, and you, go, you go to activities and a problem. You ain't got nobody in your life. You the problem. There's a common denominator. Y'all, y'all tight. It's tight. I mean, jealousy. Jealousy. Fits of rage. Well, that's just how I am. <laughs> okay. Selfish ambition. Dissensions. Fractions. And envy. Drunkenness. Let me ask you. I'm going to hit this one. People say, Brian, is it wrong to drink? Why? Listen, if you are a child of God, why, why, why do you want to drink? Come on, y'all. Talk to me. What if y'all seen me at Fiesta with a big Bud Light? Yeah, you probably would. So why is it wrong for me? You say, well, Brian, right, First Timothy chapter. I knew. See, religious people are always talk. To... Here's the common denominator. I may be a bishop and a preacher, but you're a Christian too. So let me go on. I'm just saying, be, you're, it's under the wrong influence. Do I think you'll die and go to hell for drinking a beer? No. There's only one way, watch, that you're going to die and go to hell is if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Watch. Fractions and envy and drunkenness and orgy. Hold on. Let me blow us up a little bit. Hang on. Did y'all say that? I mean, that's like rated R. It says orgies. Oh, Brian, what is it? I'm going to get there in just a minute. And the like. See, what? what watch. Watch. It says orgies, comma, and the like. And the like. And the like. <clears throat> See, he's trying to get my voice right now. <clears throat> he says, I warn you. Come on. Please. I warn you. As I did before, you better listen. You better pay attention. There should be a difference in your life. That those who live like this. Oh, Brian, I'm a Southern Baptist. There's going to be Southern Baptists in hell. Brian, I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> They're going to be in hell if they do not know Jesus Christ. He said, if you live like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, uh uh-uh, preacher. No, no, y'all, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, y'all, uh-uh. He says, if you live like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, if you live like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Are y'all with me? Is, are y'all with me? God mentioned, listen to this. 15 <laughs> different things in two verses, Courtney, that will keep you out of heaven. 
15. 15 things he said, if you live like this, if you habitually live like this, if there's not a turnaround in your life, if you don't repent of this sin, if you don't come out of the tomb, if you don't get out of the graveyard, if you don't see me and run to me and fall at my feet and worship and repent, he said, you will not go to heaven. I told someone the other day, they was talking about cheating on, on your wife. And I just told them. I said, there's no woman in this world worth me dying and going to hell for. I think I'm at the right church. There's no woman worth me dying and going to hell for. I'm going to say it again. There's no person worth me. You say, Brian, that's pretty bold. Watch this. Hell's bold. And when you get there, there ain't no coming back. What you decide here will be lived out there. And I know this is tough, but y'all listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. I did not say that. God did. God said that sexual perversion, watch, will leave a lifetime scar on you. It will leave a lifetime scar on you. Yes, watch, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus died for you. Yes, Jesus will forgive you. Yes, Jesus is coming back for you if you repent. But watch this, it will still leave a scar on you. I got a scar right here from playing football. I wasn't a D9 dozer on the field. I know who gave it to me. I know how I got it. And I can't get rid of it. It scarred me. But it don't hurt no more. It don't hurt no more. It used to hurt. It used to sting. But it don't hurt no more. That's what a scar will do. Now, a wound is different. But listen to me. Yes, he'll forgive you, but watch this. It will leave a lifetime scar. Watch this on you. I told Dana coming to church this morning. I said, if I were to commit adultery, are y'all okay? Everybody, everybody good? Talk to me, church. If, if I were to commit adultery, it's not just going to mess me up and my marriage up. It's going to mess Elkhorn up. It messes. There's a man right now in this community said, I will never go back to church because the pastor committed adultery. Now, he's wrong because evidently he was going to church for the pastor. Now, he was wrong, but he's still hurting. There'll be a day he's going to walk in Elkhorn. I told him, I said, go ahead and feel like that because you're coming to Elkhorn. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Listen to me. When you, it, it messes your children up. See, we think we're mamas and daddies and everything's good. And what you're doing behind closed doors, nobody will ever know. You better check your closet. Because it's not just going to mess you up and your marriage up. You're going to get a scar and one day your kids are going to say, I know what daddy did. I know what mama did. I know why they divorced. I know why they're what they are. I know what daddy's doing. He don't think I'm looking at him, but he is. I'm telling you right now, little Nolan is watching Jimmy. He's watching Allison. He's watching Lauren. He's watching me. See, when you experiment with homosexuality, and you experiment with porn. And when you experiment with swinging. It's a form of orgy. Man, God is tight. Help me, Holy Ghost. Swinging's wrong. And the devil is so crazy, he made a commercial up about it. They thought they was advertising television, but there's a spirit behind that. Swinging's wrong. God said, I created them, husband and wife. <laughs> Orgies is wrong. And we got so-called Christians. It's doing this stuff. But the Bible says in Galatians 5, watch, I didn't write this. If you live like this, you will not. Inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask you something. Is that drug your own? If that, if that orgy or is that swinging partner, is that worth dying and going to hell for? 
It'll destroy your life. Dana, pray for me. It'll destroy your life. It'll scar you forever. It'll take you to the graveyard. It'll make you live in a tomb. It'll make you lose your mind. So if I'm talking to you today, I'm asking you to come out of that grave. Right now, come out, just come out of that grave and say, Brian, I ain't getting up. That's called pride. Run to Jesus. Repent of your sins. Turn from your evil ways. Fall at the feet of Jesus and worship him. If you're living in that sin and you don't feel him right now, he's got a grip on you. Satan's got a grip on you. He's got a grip on you. And watch, I wrote that down in my notes. I've never seen Jesus not accept someone who repents. I've, listen, I've never seen Jesus say, no. You think he's going to nail his son on a cross? And then if you truly repent, he's going to sit there and go, no. Nah, I didn't really do that all for you. Are you all okay, Sam, I'm with you? Whew. Number three. I'm glad that one's over. I am, y'all. Listen, I'm fighting up here, y'all. So if you're sleeping and if you're just start moving your tongue, you'll speak in tongues really quick. Number three, rebellion. Rebellion. We got a lot of rebellious teenagers today. We got a lot of a lot of rebellious church people. The Bible says rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Y'all ready? <laughs> it's going to mess y'all up. What is witchcraft, according to the Bible? It's called satanic worship. It's called tarot cards. Ouija boards. Palm reading. Harry Potter. Whew. All that, watch, all that leads to rebellion. So parents, let me, let me teach you. When you've got a rebellious child, I promise you they're messing with witchcraft. Boy, y'all, y'all, I thought I was at a Southern Baptist church. <laughs> it's Bible. It's in the, when you got a rebellious child, when you got rebellious adults, when you got rebellious all around you at work or wherever you may be, they're messing with witchcraft. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's right. They're messing with witchcraft. They're messing with it. And all that stuff, I just told you, rebellion. And if rebellion, watch, is not dealt with, it will lead, lead to some kind of witchcraft. Yep. And I wrote this down. Witchcraft is like playing Russian roulette with the devil. You might as well put one bullet in the gun. I'm going to live the way I want to live and spin that old gun around and, and point it at you and say, I hope today I don't get busted. You're playing Russian roulette with the devil. There's going to come a time that gun's going to go off. There's going to come a time when you're going to get caught. There's going to come a time when that sin's going to run out. There's going to come a time. Listen, Satan does not play fair. And by the way, I am tired of burying teenagers. I am tired. I'm so tired of all the drugs and all the things in this community. We know we got a problem here. But nobody wants to step up and do anything about it. And I declare today, it is time. It's time for the church to stand up and take authority back over the house of Jesus Christ. There are people here today, I promise you, whether it's drugs, sexual perversion, or rebellion, people are dealing with this stuff. They are. The road of rebellion, I wrote this down. The road of rebellion will lead you to a graveyard every time. So let me break it down to you, Elkhorn style, and praise him you come. I'm done. Sick. If you rebel at work, if you rebel at church, if you are a rebellious teenager with your parents, if you are a football player, a basketball player, a baseball player, and you rebel against your head coach, see, y'all, if you rebel against authority, we can talk about cops all we want to. 
We need police officers, good police officers. Good police. Now, if you're bad, you need to get out of, you need to get out of the force. But if, you, if a police officer, a good one, is giving you instruction, you can't rebel. If you rebel, that's witchcraft. If you rebel against the word of God, if God says it's like this, and you say, now, hold on, I, I've never done it like that, God, and I wasn't raised like that, and uh, God, you know, I know it's in the Bible, but it, we're living in different times. God's sitting there going, we'll see how that works out on judgment. Because from Genesis to Revelation, watch me, every word is yes and amen. And you along with myself, do not have the authority to tell God what he can do and what he cannot do no more. It is the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. It's the word of God. But if you, if you rebel, if you rebel, you know what, you know what I had to do yesterday? Crazy. Um, yesterday was a tough day. I guess I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. How many of y'all have ever done that before? Man, I had to apologize to my wife. Y'all know how hard that is. Yep, do it every day. Every day. <laughs> Smart man. But here's how, here's how sensitive God is. Just walking through the house and God, just like God said, you need to go say, I'm sorry. I'm like, God, we've been married 27 years. She knows how I am. And God's like, I know you very well. I created you while you was yet in your mother's womb, but you need to go say you're sorry. You know rebellion will keep you in your seat. Y'all don't want to miss next Sunday because it's God's three deadlines. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but some of you may be living in a deadline. Is that serious? Drugs will send you to a graveyard. Sexual perversion will send you to a graveyard. Rebellion will send you to a graveyard. So you know what God told me to do? This is crazy. But I'm going to do it because God told me to. And you say, Brian, good gracious. See, the difference between me and you, I really believe I'm going to stand before God and give an account on this sermon. Just like you're going to give an account on your life. God told me to apologize to you. You say, Brian, for what? I feel that sometimes I fight against rebellion. I feel that sometimes, what well, do y'all agree with this or not? That, that spirit of sexual perversion, ooh. Y'all want to see a good church service? How many of y'all deal with that one? Y'all a bunch of liars, which y'all are. See, you know why I can raise my hand and say I deal with that? Because I'm free, man. I, I don't care what y'all think. <laughs> I love you. But you ain't going to send me to hell. You ain't going to send me to hell. I'm going to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. And so I'm just asking y'all. As I back up, I get off this stage, and I beat y'all to the altar. I don't know where y'all are at know where I'm at. Here's the last thing God spoke to me. And I wanted to put this on the big screen. The last pick. So good. I'd rather be in a million pieces at his feet than a million miles from his presence. <laughs> Brian, I got this going on. Good, come on. Talk to me today. You can be broken at his feet. He's the master. He'll put you back together. He'll stand you back up. He'll forgive you. And put you back together. He's the master. Woo! He's the master. So I'm telling y'all today, I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at. Watch, God's got your number, sir. Ma'am, 
Your time's up. If, if you're here today and your heart is beating really fast, and you say, oh God, I, I should have picked a different Sunday. God, this sermon's for you. We can all learn from this sermon. I'd rather put it back up there, please, in Jesus' name. Leave it there. I'd rather be in a million pieces at his feet than a million miles from his presence. Can y'all feel him? So how did that demon-possessed man get out of the graveyard? He wasn't at church. He was in a graveyard. He seemed like he was a million, watch, a million miles away. Would y'all agree? A million, nobody wanted anything to do with him. They tried to bind him. They tried to tame him. They tried to put chains on him. He was screaming. He was shouting. He was taking rocks and cutting his head. He didn't want to live. Have you ever been there? The same God there is here today. That's what I love about God. Because 2,000 years ago, he was there. And 2,000 years now, he's here. And if you're here today, you're at a church that will not judge you. You're at a church that will love you right where you're at. I will meet you at the altar. I will run to you. All you got to do is raise your hand and say, Brian, I don't want to come to the altar. I will come to you today. I just want us to be set free in here. I want Elkhorn to come out of the graveyard. I want us to walk out of the tombs. I want us to break the chains on our life. How's that going to happen, Brian? Jesus. I want y'all to dream with me just a little bit. Imagine this. If Jesus Christ was standing here right now. Right now, he's here. How many of y'all know he's here? So rebellion will send you out that door <laughs> the same way you walked in. Conviction will make you get up out of your seat and run to this altar and bow down at his feet and say, God, I need you. I thought I went too far. I thought I smoked too much dope. I thought I drank too much beer. Y'all okay? Can I preach just a little bit? God, I've slept around. I've committed adultery. Lord, I've done all these things. But God, today, that crazy preacher, for some reason, he preached this crazy sermon out of Mark chapter 5. And I took the man that was in the graveyard name out. And I put my name in. And God, I noticed that the last of this chapter. He ran to you. He felt you. He wanted you. And God, you just received him back. So God, that's what I'm going to do today. God, I'm going to run to your feet. God, I'm going to put my pride off. I'm going to put my rebellion off. I'm going to put the sexual perversion off. God, I'm going to put the drugs off. And God, here I am. I'm running to you today. If y'all want him, come get him. Because he's right here. I'd rather be in a million pieces at his feet than a million miles from his presence. I dedicate this sermon over everybody here today. I know it was tough, but watch. That's where the rubber meets the road. I love you and thank y'all for not getting up and running out. But y'all ready? It's time to run to his feet. I call the old spirit of drugs out. I call that old sexual perversion spirit, I call it out. I call that old rebellious spirit, I call it out in Jesus Christ's name. Elkhorn, mighty, mighty Elkhorn, I want you to stand to your feet all over this house. And I want you to run to this altar. You say, Brian, what if people see me? Don't let nobody send you to hell. Don't let nobody send you to hell. Don't you let nobody send you to hell. Push them out of your way. Go over them, go under them. But get to the feet of Jesus. In Jesus' name, God, this sermon's for you. This sermon's for you, church family. Let's go find Jesus. Let's come to his feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.